Well, um, we're reversing roles here today. Um, my name is Yonina Campbell. I'm the executive director with the BC Greens, and I have the privilege, uh, because it is Autism Awareness Month, of interviewing one of our most outstanding staff members. This is Dev Percy. And normally you would see her as our uh, volunteer spotlight coordinator doing the interviews herself. Uh, but we're gonna turn the tables here today, Dev, and I'm going to have a chance to interview you um, a little bit. So why don't we start with uh, you telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do for, our, uh, for the BC Green Party. Right now, I'm, I'm your, your spotlight bond, your coordinator. Right now, I interview other volunteers to inspire other people to get, get involved and volunteer more. Yeah, excellent. And you do a great job of it. And mm -hmm. we just, I always look forward to these uh, interviews each month. I enjoy it. Deb, tell us a little bit about autism because it's Autism Awareness Month. What, what do we need to know about autism? Um, I'll say just for me, is I'm only, I'm slightly on the spectrum, which it means that um, I have trouble with social cues sometimes. Like sometimes I have trouble understanding certain humor or sarcasm or um, change of plans is hard for me. Mm -hmm. Or um, what else? Sometimes I can, I can be too honest and sometimes it can, it can, uh, it can actually um, get me in trouble and sometimes it actually works. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's good for people to be really honest. <laughs> I, that's a, you know, sometimes it's not so, so um, probably easy for other people to be called out on things. Um, so you, you say that things can be harder for you because you have autism. Um, and then I think you raised something important, which is that it's a spectrum and that you're like one dot on the spectrum of what it looks like to have autism. And some people might have different challenges depending on where they are or different strengths, right? Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that um, make it, uh, that you see as your strength though, because of having autism? Um, because I have my, with autism, we, we often um, have our own gifts. Like I can focus on one thing and block everything out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, have, I have my own way of thinking. I look at the world differently than other people. I, I see the world different. And what about things like what kind of learner you are, whether you're a visual or an auditory learner? How, how does your autism shape your learning style? I'd say I'm mostly a visual learner. Like I can picture a world map in my head. Wow. So does that make you good at geography? Yes, I'm very good. Like um, I walked up at a, at a, at a career, career fair come at, at um, school and college, college one time and they had a, a quiz. I already knew it at heart. I got them all right. I nailed them in, sec in seconds. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, in terms of the pandemic, it's been tough on a, a lot of us. Um, how has the pandemic influenced your life or impacted your life? For, for one thing, I have, since I struggle with social cues, I, str I struggle with connections. I live alone and I'm, having, I'm living back and forth with my parents and my my and on my own on and off it's really um frustrating and um it's it's, it's challenging and also, also i have an anxiety with masks like some people autism manage just fine with masks but i have a real sensory with it mm -hmm. and um i have i have trouble with facial expressions i can see how people's facial expressions for me it looks like everyone's really serious or really angry that's what it looks like for me to be people, people around people wearing masks Right, and I think that's something that maybe um, someone like myself might take for granted, right? That I, you, you know, don't appreciate that by wearing a mask, it can be really hard for you to interpret um, facial expressions and what a person is thinking um, and uh, the sensory issue of having that on. So how has that affected you? Do, do you? do you feel as comfortable going outside and to the stores and things like that? No, that's why back in poverty, um, I can't, I couldn't even go outside. I couldn't, I couldn't leave the house. Yeah, yeah just it's, a real, what, how it, did it make you feel? It very, very down. Like um, it takes a toll on my mental health. Like um, I couldn't do anything. Like I, I, I sometimes I wouldn't, um, I'd be up on the couch um, day after day with um, just not doing what to do with myself. I, I was so lost. Yeah. And and, I, and that must be really, really tough to go through. If you, if you had words of encouragement for others uh, that are going through that, 
what kinds of things have really helped you get through that tight that that time um well so far i come um to power river covid's not as much in my face so i can um go out like the, the victoria covid's so much more in my face like it's on the bus and it's on the mall uh, and I go to the mall it's, it's everywhere like i can't relax anywhere and for um since there's not i don't have to worry about the bus and poverty small i can walk to the beach and explore like right since i'm, I'm a bit of a Grand Thunberg, I really, I'm very interested in the environment. I spent hours exploring by myself. Like I, I found a seal that was um, on the beach, luckily got, began to, uh, got wrapped up in fishing wire. I was even calling the BC Mammal Response and got them to take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely a very compassionate person that cares about the environment and climate change. And one of the things I know about you is that you are really interested in photography. Um, why don't you tell us about some of the things that uh, you're really interested in that really are your your passions in, in life? I love photography. I, I found the photography when I went to live in Mexico by myself. I like taking pictures of um, scenery and nature and sometimes old buildings. And I, now I've, I've, I love taking pictures of wildlife and now it's becoming a, a tool for me just to advocate for that environment. So passion with photography, travel. Yes. Where would, where would you travel if once things are all better and there's uh, everyone's safe? What, where would you go right now in the world? Right now I'm most looking at Fiji Island. Wow, why Why Fiji? There's another conservation project I, I wanna do for instance, even before the Green Party. It's yeah. a scuba diving job. I dream of scuba diving. I would love to help stop, um, stop sharks from being endangered and uh, uh, it, the people finning them. I really want to um, help stop that. Wow. Prevent um, it. Now, I also know because you're, um, you work for, for the BC Greens and I've known you for a few years, uh, <laughs> that you like politics. Tell, tell us a little bit about your passion for politics. I'm very passionate politics. Um, our former federal leader, um, uh, provincial leader, excuse me, goes around and says, Hey, this is Devin. She's uh, obsessed with politics. She's addicted to politics. She goes around and tell, tells everybody. Yeah. Um, remember, life is normal. I'm a hardcore political nerd. I've met um, 28 MPs. 28. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on, been on about uh, 20, uh, 20 campaigns. Yeah, no, you are quite like the canvasser out on the doors. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's something you really missed in the last <laughs> provincial election. I do. I um I can even train people about how to canvas. Like I can teach them how to use the, the record sheet and geography. I remember I can find my way very well on a map map in Victoria. What is it you like about canvassing? Um, I like discussion, the challenge. I I'm a sensitive person, but I do have thick skin in some places. Like I'm not afraid if someone says um, I don't believe in climate change. I don't or um, uh, girls can't do it. Women can't do it. I I, I have thick skin for for um, sexism and climate change so you just get out there and show people that they can do it and and yes you know yeah wow that you're I, a great role model i like um on the doorstep i like to be able to not change their views because because of their views i like to be um, that strong person yeah yeah and i i really appreciate how um how much you read on 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 the issues like you're you're very knowledgeable on the issues aren't you i'm a very heavy reader yeah um, so we've talked about politics, the environment. I, I also know that you're really passionate about world religions. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, I'm Anglican. I I used to be in a fundamentalist church, but my got involved with the Green Party. They were they weren't very accepting. They didn't like that I was visiting. I care sort of visit the mosque, the the seat temple, and and this and the synagogue. I I spent a lot of time reading the world religions. I also interviewed a man who was Amish. That's how I got this got this job with this volunteer um, spotlight um, coordinator job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, who inspires you, Deb? I have lots of inspirations. Greg Thunberg is a big one. She's she was telling that what I want to hear. No, we're we're not a disease. We don't want to be cured. We're uh, we're it's a superpower. Yeah, I want the world to hear that. She yeah, did that yeah. for me. Yeah. I think she's done a really important. Um, she's a, played a really important role in helping people see that people with autism have a lot of 
um, strengths and things to bring to the world, then we need to be um, really looking at that as a strength in people. And, and you've shared that and taught me that. Yes. Yeah. I've inspired about all kinds of people in life. Like Malala Yousef was a big inspiration at the beginning of politics. Mm-hmm. I, I like any woman that stands up for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I think having more uh, leaders, uh, feminist leaders is really important. Um, you know, I just spent the last week watching uh, women's basketball uh, because it's really inspiring to see women coach, ref, play. And, uh, you know, I think that those are, Role models everywhere are really important. Um, and you're a role model for a lot of uh, young young women coming up. Um, what are you most proud of, Deb, in your accomplishments, things that you've done? Going to Mexico on my own was 20 for three months. That's my biggest accomplishment of all. Wow. Yeah, I, I haven't even done something like that. <laughs> People tell me no matter who they are, they, they, have, they haven't or they won't do that. Yeah. Any other accomplishments you can think of that you're really proud of? Of course, my politics. Mm-hmm. I'm going to Ottawa and finding out that I have connections there because I, I work so hard there and that they knew things. It was our former executive director who, who connected to me to them, but it was still amazing to find out that they, they knew things about me, how hard I work and how many politicians I've met. And at one point they said, you must be quite the political junkie. The truth came out. <laughs> <laughs> You're very well known in the world of politics. Thank you. Yeah. Even with his election, like um, during the federal election, did I ever tell you about the candidate who tried to who tried to um, uh, get me to Saskatchewan and work on her campaign? No, no, I don't know that about that. There was, was Naomi Hunter. I didn't know her. She found about me somehow on Facebook and tried to get me to to stay at her place for for a month and help her. Well, you probably have a really good reputation as a hard worker, and you're very convincing when you go out door knocking. So uh, I can see that a lot of people would want you on their campaign. Um, <laughs> Just, uh, you know, while we wrap up this interview and, you know, it being Autism Awareness Month and, uh, you know, is there, what are some final comments you have around um, autism and what you want people to, to know about it and why it's important for us to be talking about autism, not just this month, but all the time? We want to be included and we want friends like, like anyone else in the world. And we don't like it when try to, people try to make me make us be someone we're not just like every other, every other walk of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for you to go out and also have uh, an opportunity to have meaningful work, right? And do, do this kind of work here. Yes, that's why I love politics. Politics kind of gives me a purpose. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, well, I, I, I can't say that I do as good of job interviewing as you do, but I have to say it's been really fun doing this with you. And I wanna thank you for being courageous and coming and telling your story so that others can learn more about um, autism and, um, and putting yourself out there and being one thank of the role models. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay.